All right, they peruse, and today we're going to be discussing section 20 of the Tobacco Products Directive. Tobacco? This isn't fucking tobacco. What a bunch of bastards. All right, so you should know by now you should, if you're a vapor and you're watching this, you should know about section 20 of the TB, TPD, the Tobacco Products Directive. Um, it's it's going to be a dark, dark, dark time for us vapors. Uh, I mean, I've got some bullet points here about how it's going to affect you guys and me and everybody else that vapes, all the vendors and everything to do with vaping in this country. have to vape to calm down about it. Um, so the basic bullet points, and it's not if, it's when this comes in. It's already it's already been passed. This this directive this this thing has already been passed. Um, they're just waiting to implement it, and it's going to be 2016, 2000 end of 2015, beginning of 2016. Um, okay, so the bullet points. Um, the devices now, these box mods, these tube mods behind me, you know, the mech mods, thing of the past. It's going to be, it's going to be a fixed wattage or fixed voltage device, probably 3.7 volts, a bit like the, you know, the Ego starter kits. Um, so, so that's your first thing. All of these, they're going to be banned. And tanks as well. This is a goblin. I love my goblin. You're going to have to rip this out of my cold, dead hands before I stop using this goblin. Either that or when it breaks. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're recommending, or, or the directive says, they're not recommending, the directive says it should be no more than a 2 mil capacity, a closed device with you know a, a standardised refilling system, so you won't be able to break these apart. And um, yeah, <laughs> get fucked is what I say. Um, yeah, so so an outright ban on anything over two mil, all right? So you, you're not going to have the choice of tanks, the RDAs, the RTAs, the clearamizers. That you know you're not you're not going to have any choice. It's going to be one thing, and it's going to be like your standardised basic kit that you got when you first started. Next thing, e-liquids. Okay, they uh, they say you're gonna have be able to order no more than ten mil. Well, the the bottle size is gonna be no more than ten mil, and the nicotine strength is gonna be at its strongest twenty milligrams of nicotine. Okay. Well, for me, I don't go above six, but for most of you or or the new starters, you know, sometimes some of them kick on a thirty-six, but yeah. 10 mil of liquid that is absolutely ridiculous it's going to be so expensive it's going to be more expensive than smoking you know what I mean all these little vendors we got all these cool little vendors that do amazing liquids that we keep buying they, I doubt they'll be around I doubt they'll be able to afford to stay around it's uh, it's ridiculous um, and so I mean what we're looking at from a vapors point of view is we're all gonna look the same we're all gonna have these little tiny ego starter batteries and tanks and the experience that we're gonna get is nothing compared to now I mean this is this this is satisfying this is satisfying vape as soon as you get an ego in your hand with your little sort of C4 whatever it is it's I don't know it's not for me um, okay so that's that's for the vapors let's see, let's see about the industry then advertising restrictions um, okay so you're not going to be able to advertise your products you're not going to be able to ad advertise anything to do with vaping um, which is absolutely shit these small vendors how are they supposed to get their message out how are they supposed to say you know we got this new product come on let's sing along come buy our products they can't 
Okay, it's plain and simple, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, Pre-market notifications. So they're gonna, the vendors are gonna, ha or the manufacturers are gonna have to give six months notice minimum to uh, get these products onto market. That's gonna take a long time. That's like. It's, you're looking at a year probably um, to get a product to market because then they've after the six months notice then they've got to uh, go and test it and stuff like that it's going to be absolutely ridiculous um, you got to list all your ingredients um, down to 0.1% on the liquids um, so anything that's over or, or on 0.1% of the content of the liquid is uh, yeah okay so you've got to list that I mean most liquids have got four main ingredients anyway um, so yeah you do the math I, I, I this is ridiculous it makes me angry um, okay so basically tests of all the liquids which isn't essentially a bad thing because you know we, we need to know we're safe and what we're vaping but these tests are too too fucking Dara. Um, yeah, so basically, I'll read it out. Toxicological testing of fluids and emissions for every product, every flavour, and every strength, which I can guarantee is going to be expensive. That's why we're going to lose a lot of the smaller vendors for the e liquids. Um, <laughs> uh, so it, they're saying here the costs are likely to be in excess of 10k per flavour and strength. So each different strength is going to have to have tests. £10,000 per flavour. You couldn't make that back up in a year, not if you're a small vendor. This is disgusting. Um, yeah, and you've got the standardised refill mechanism. Um, so it, I, I don't know what it's going to be yet. They're, they'll probably make up some whirly gig about it that it, you're going to have to fucking extract liquid from your anus and pump it in that's how fucking stupid this directive is um, but yeah it is actually in place they're just waiting they're just waiting to you know implement it uh, it's I'm angry I'm angry now there is something which a company called totally wicked uh, if you haven't heard about them um, and you're in the vaping world then there's something wrong uh, yeah, so there is something that Totally Wicked are doing. They're actually fighting this in the courts, okay? Um, which is, you know, a, a company standing up to the EU. Hats off to them. At the end of the day, they don't want their industry destroyed. And, and you know, they, I, I would like to say... <laughs> I would like to say they're doing it for all us vapors, which they are in a way, but I think a lot of it is um, to uh, to protect their industry and their money, their revenue stream. Um, but still, it's still a brilliant thing what they're doing. Um, and you could support that. Uh, basically, I will put a link on the description below of where you can support it. And please go on click the support the legal challenge button and just fill it in all you need to do is your name your email and your town where you're from um, the more signatures of support they get the better it is uh, but yeah it's down to us it's down to us vapors okay it's down to me it's down to you guys it's down to the vendors small and big it's down to the Facebook groups it's down to the bloody Google communities that you got it's down to us YouTube reviewers to just stand up and say you know we're not fucking standing for this this is the equipment I want to use me personally this is what I want to use to vape and I will use it okay and that is it that's the bottom line for me um, so you know <laughs> I'm angry, but uh, yeah, let's just cut this off now. Um, I'm going to put the link in the bottom uh, to show how you can show your support for the for the case. Um, it's called article20legalchallenge.com. Uh, 20 is 20. I will put the link down below. And for me, that's it for now. So, uh, toodles.